Hey, up here. No, 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 a little bit lower, a little bit to the left. Yeah, there you go. Hey everybody, my name's Austin, and today I'm going to talk to you about the DJI mic, which is the very reason why you can hear me talking pretty clearly, even though I'm a few hundred feet away from my camera. Now, this microphone has been all over YouTube lately with a lot of reviews where people have got it for free. I paid for this microphone with my own money, and I want to talk to you about three things I like about this system and three things that I don't like about this system. So, let's get to it. This is it. This right here is the DJI mic system. And it's a pretty simple system, which is actually one of the things I like most about it. This is the charging case. Anytime you open it, it's going to tell you the charge status for the case itself. So I'm at four out of four. And then inside it holds your transmitters. There are two of them I'm wearing one right now, as well as the receiver. And also inside of here, you have these little adapters, if I can get them out. This is a lightning port adapter that attaches to the bottom of the receiver. There's also a USB-C adapter and a cold shoe adapter. We'll talk about that one later. Now, what I actually like most about this, while the charging case element is brilliant and DJI is really leaning on what they do best with batteries and power management, what I like best about this charging case, and the first thing that I like most about the DJI system, is that whenever you open this charging case, it automatically syncs the transmitters and the receiver immediately. So as soon as you open it, it's gonna tell you the battery status, and it's also going to show you that they are fully synced. It's super seamless, and you should never have to sync these yourself. Now, maybe you're someone who needs to go ultralight, and you don't want to carry around the whole charging case. Well, if you're like me and you like going backpacking, you can just carry transmitters, one or two of them. Each one of these transmitters can record internally. That's actually what you're listening to now is internal recording on the transmitter in my pocket, attached to this lav and synced after the fact to this video. And you do so by just hitting the little button on the side. One of my favorite things about these transmitters is that you have LED notifications and they vibrate. So when you turn recording on or off, you feel it and your talent will feel it as well. Really easy way of just letting someone know, hey, if you feel this transmitter vibrate, let me know you may have just muted yourself or stopped your recording. Before we get to item number two, just a quick note that I have switched from a lavalier mic going into the DJI mic to the DJI mic here on my chest with the included magnet and wind muff. And I did that because the wind is picking up, the palm trees are rustling as the parrots are chirping. And I wanted you guys to be able to hear the difference between these kind of different setups. So item number two that I like most about this system is that it comes with two transmitters. And each of these transmitters has individually adjustable gain. That is not something that you can do on the Rode Wireless Go 2, and it's really important to be able to do that. You can adjust the gain for these individually using the receiver. It's a little buried in the menu. I wish it was easier to access. You should also note that here on the receiver, I can see the levels for each mic. I can see if I'm clipping on either of these two mics. I can see their battery levels, whether they're assigned to left or right stereo, and which ones are muted or recording internally. Right now I know that this one right here is recording internally because that's, I actually don't really use the receiver very much. But what's really nice about this and why you need that individual gain adjustment is because people talk at different volumes and different microphones have different gains. So for myself, I talk a little bit quieter and I usually have like this one set to plus five dB. This transmitter is set to plus zero dB, and I would put this on someone who maybe talks a little bit louder, or if I'm using a lavalier mic that I know to be a little hot. You can adjust the gain for either transmitter from minus 12 to plus 12, and you can adjust the receiver level gain from minus 12 to plus 12. So you have an enormous amount of flexibility in terms of your gain settings to get the right mix for your audio. The third thing about the DJI mic system that I really like is how easy it is with something like a GoPro to just make a super lightweight vlogging setup. So I can just take the microphone like this, clip it off to my chest strap like that, and we are ready to go with arguably what might be the lightest vlogging setup out there. And it's a huge improvement audio quality wise over the audio you get with a GoPro. So right now you are listening to audio from the GoPro Hero 10. I even have those little dead cats, tiny, tiny dead mice, whatever you wanna call them, over the GoPro mics. And as you can probably hear, you can hear a little bit of wind noise, you can hear the birds, you might even hear cars on the road that way. But if I switch to the DJI mic right now, 
you're gonna notice that while you can still get some of that ambient noise coming in, overall, it is a huge improvement in audio quality. And frankly, between this little tiny transmitter, just one of them, about five hours of battery life to record from, and the GoPro, that's about as small and lightweight of a vlogging setup as it's gonna get. You don't even need the media mod, you don't need to plug in the receiver if you don't want to, just record internally and sync the audio after the fact. We've talked about three things that I really like about the DJI mic, and now it's time to talk about the three things that I don't like about this system. And the first of those is this. This is the cold shoe adapter for the DJI mic system, and it's what allows you to attach the receiver onto the hot shoe of a camera or the cold shoe of something like a GoPro media mod. When you first take this out, it's pretty cool, right? It folds up small, it slots directly into the bottom of the receiver. It's convenient, I'll give them that. But the problem is that this thing is made out of incredibly flimsy injection molded plastic with a spring that is far too strong for how weak that material is. If you don't believe me when I say that this thing will break on you eventually, watch DP Review's recent video. Theirs broke on them within a matter of days, and I think we're gonna see a lot more videos about that in the future. That wouldn't be a problem, except that DJI does not sell replacements for these, so we are stuck waiting for someone on Amazon or elsewhere to start manufacturing these on their own, hopefully out of aluminum, or if you just have a friend with a 3D printer, you can probably 3D print your own. Nonetheless, that is a problem and a oversight on DJI's part for an otherwise pretty awesome system. Item number two that I'm not a fan of for this system actually has nothing to do with the charging case or the microphones inside of it. I think all that stuff is great. The problem has to do with this little pouch, this little drawstring monogrammed pouch. Anyone like me who's watched a lot of YouTube videos reviewing this product Almost all of those videos up to now have been videos where people didn't pay for it themselves. They got free pre-production units from DJI. Now, of course, these are pre-production units. There's some expectation that things might be a little different, but this is a big one because with the audio equipment, you have a lot of cables and you want to keep those things organized. And it turns out that DJI was sending people in the pre-production units, these nice zippered little pouches that hold everything, keep them nice and organized. You're not gonna get that for your $330. You are going to get this, your drawstring pouch with a single divider inside, some, in my case, yellowing instruction manuals, your wind muffs and cables, but hey, at least it's monogrammed. Now, I don't have any problem with this pouch. I think it does its job as any pouch or even a sock would at keeping AV equipment together, like little lavalier mics and wind muffs. My problem is with DJI as a company supporting a practice and propagating a practice where you send products to YouTube reviewers for people like you and I, customers, to watch and to decide whether or not we want to buy a product. And in those pre-production units, including capabilities or things like a zippered pouch that you have no intention of ever including in the version that people like me buy at the store. This is a great product, but I think DJI as a company made a bad business decision in doing that. Now, item number three that I'm not really a fan of with the DJI mic system, and this is a nitpicky thing, which should tell you I like this system as a whole, has to do with the charging case, or rather, the way things fit inside of it. So if I open up this charging case, I'm gonna take out the transmitter, and I'm going to take out the receiver. My problem is with the adapters, the cold shoe adapter, the USB-C, and the lightning port adapter. The cold shoe adapter comes out so easily that I dropped it on the take before this, over this little railing. The lightning port adapter comes out eh, moderately hard. The USB-C adapter in my case hardly comes out. I have to really, really yank on this thing. Over time, those two tight manufacturing tolerances can actually do one of two things. First, it could kind of break in the case and this could get easier to take in and out. Second, it could break the USB-C adapter. And as I'm already seeing signs of wear on this, that's what I'm thinking is gonna happen in the long term, which is concerning because I don't really think replacements are going to be easy to get. Sorry about that. Started to rain outside, so I needed to come inside. So, what about this DJI mic? Is it worth the $330 that you're gonna spend to get it? Well, if you're gonna buy a Rode Wireless Go 2 system, you're gonna spend about $300. And for that money, you're gonna get two transmitters that can record internally, but you can't adjust the gain individually on them. And if you want to use it for anything like a laptop, for video calls or stuff like that, you're gonna to have to buy extra cables. At least with the DJI mic system, it comes with pretty much everything you need. You'll get your charging case, which for a road system is at least another 50 bucks for something third party off of Amazon. And then you also get adapters that you need for using it on an iPhone, a Google Pixel phone, or on a MacBook. 
In my experience, using the receiver with the USB-C adapter here, I can plug it directly into my phone and it recognizes it as a wired microphone. And I've also used it for video calls here on my MacBook, like this example. Here's a quick test of audio from the DJI mic in a Zoom call. I'm recording in Zoom and you are listening to audio from my MacBook Pro's internal microphones. And now you are listening to audio from the DJI mic, which I have plugged in via the receiver using the included USB-C adapter. And the transmitter is right here on my shirt attached with the included magnets, which I can easily keep just out of frame. A great way of improving audio quality in kind of an everyday Zoom call setting. Honestly, it's not every day that something you buy to help you make YouTube content or other videos finds utility in other parts of your life. And I have used this system every single day for Zoom calls, and I'm glad on that basis alone that I bought it. For $30 more than a Rode Wireless Go 2, you already get the adapters. You still get two transmitters, but these ones have individually adjustable gain, and the receiver is way, way nicer, although the menus could use a little bit of work. And of course, there's the dreaded cold shoe adapter, but I think that can be resolved, or you can just make your own at home. Overall, I'm really happy with this system. It's a great value. The audio is great to my ears as someone who does not consider themselves an audiophile by any means. It's small, it's portable, and I'm glad I bought it. So, if you have any questions, please put them down below. I will do my best to address them. If you liked this video, please remember to like and subscribe. It lets me know that you guys actually enjoy this content and it lets the YouTube algorithm gods know that more people should watch this video. If you have enough comments or questions, I'm also happy to make a follow-up video. With that, I'm Austin. This has been a review of the DJI mic, and I will see you guys next time.